How's it going guys? This is Leo Figueroa with my RV, 2021 Thor 22E. If you're watching this video, you're either bored, you're thinking about renting an RV, or you already went ahead and booked our RV. So real quickly guys, this here RV is 24 and a half feet long. Uh, for the height, we're just under 12 feet tall. So make sure that whenever you're going through any overpass, any bridge, uh, you have enough clearance. Give yourself that extra foot. Make sure there's at least 13 to 14 feet clearance. Well, there are some antennas, there's different things up top that uh, we don't want you to damage. All right, guys, we're gonna be showing you on the passenger side, everything for the RV. First, to begin with, Cyber mirrors. These are manual. So when you're going to be moving them, just go ahead and move them manually. Have somebody else guide you to help move that along. Uh, locks. They're all different keys. So you have one set of keys for this here, the deadbolt, and you have separate set for this right over here. To open the RV, all you do is open this guy up right over here. Uh, this is our screen door. If you want to be able to keep this door open for ventilation and still keep the screen right over here. There is a little plastic cover. Close it right up and you're good to go to open it. Turn it right over here. Okay, here we have our propane tank. Uh, you should have no reason to come down here, but this is our propane tank. If for whatever reason your propane empties out, uh, you can refill it right over here. Whenever you rent it from us, you should have a full propane tank, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, right over here, this is just the exterior of the refrigerator. Some water will be coming out at times for condensation. Uh, we do have some power outlets right out here. Remember, power outlets are gonna work if you have the generator on or if you have hookup to the 30 amps at the campsite. Uh, right over here, we have our exterior storage. Uh, to do the exterior storage, you have a lock right over here. When you turn it on, all you have to do is turn these guys over here, lift it all the way up. There is a plastic hook right over here to hold it up. Right over here. Uh, there's gonna be two lights down here. One set over here and another right over here to allow you to do it. Uh, right over here, we do have our mat. Please use this mat whenever you get to the campsite. Just put it right over here. Every time you come in and out, clean your feet off and do it. You can put it right back when you're done. Inside here, you're gonna be able to put your storage on here, but we do have a folding table. Everything on here for the dump site, as well, all the hoses. We have an emergency kit. Uh, flares, we have some batteries, we have a first aid kit, we have a, a broom and everything else you may need, extra uh, paper towels and everything else. All right guys, we do have an electrical awning. If you're at your campsite and you want some extra shade, go ahead and use your awning. Remember, for the awning to work, you cannot have the key in the ignition. We do have a hook right over here, put the key right on the hook, you're good to go. The awning button, you press the awning up, Hold it until the awning comes out completely. You'll know you're done when the end of the awning has a part draping down. Show you one second here. A couple of really important things when you're using the awning, make sure that the awning is closed. If you're gonna be leaving your campsite, it's closed. If at nighttime when you're gonna to go to sleep, um, if there's heavy winds, anything, rain or anything else like that, go ahead and bring the awning back in. Again, this is when you know when this end drapes down. And when they close it back up, press the button right back down and hold it until it finishes closing all the way through. Don't forget, don't leave the key in the ignition. The awning will not work if the key is in the ignition. All right, guys, this is the back of the RV. Nothing too exciting here. There's a ladder. Please do not use the ladder. There's no reason for you to go up there. Uh, there's a few things up there, but there's no reason for you to go up there. Uh, we do have a hookup right over here. If you have your own bike rack, you can go ahead and connect it on here. Uh, we do not allow any towing of any vehicles, um, any um, SUVs or anything else. Uh, we do not allow any towing for anything. Uh, the rear of the camera is right up there. Okay guys, so now let's say you're at your campsite and you're all set up. Now you have to do what nobody likes doing is setting everything up for the campsite. So this here, city water connection. So city water connection is gonna be if your campsite has a direct hookup for water. That means that you don't have to use the water tank for the hookup. All you have to do is, you're gonna be using this green hose right over here uh, to connect it. So take this off right over here. 
and then you connect your hose right in here. So you can connect it all the way in, bring it in all the way. Now we do provide a water filter. So here's our water filter right over here. So remember, whenever you're gonna be using uh, the, the water hookup, any, any campsites, water usually is pretty nasty. So you are gonna to wanna to use this RV water filter to allow you to have clean water when you're going inside. So on one side of the hookup, you're gonna be connecting this guy over here, right over here. And on the other side, you're gonna connect this straight into wherever the water is for your campsite. Other end goes in here. Remember, drinking water, use a green hose. White one for the sanitation flush. Sanitation flush, you put it right in here. And I'll show you how to use that in just one second. Okay, now the, the part that everyone hates to do, but we all have to do, is for the dump station. We do provide gloves on here. Put these right on. Okay, so your campsite hopefully has hookups directly in your site so that you can connect it right on. So what you do is you turn this guy here. Okay, for any of the exterior storage, the gray key is what turns, that works it. Turn it over, bring it up, clip right over here, clip it right up. Okay, now when you get over here, you're gonna see a couple of different valves. So you see the black valve on here and you see the gray valve right over here. So what you do is you get your line. You have a total of 20 feet line, okay? Make sure when you first start, this is closed and this is closed. Uh, so it's got a cap right over here. Turn the cap over, it's gonna be nice and tight. Turn it over and then you're gonna get this end right over here, the one with the jagged parts. Bring it right over here and it hooks right on there. Okay, so then what you're gonna be doing uh, when you're in your campsite, see the black and, and the gray, those are the tanks that are interior. The black tank is for your toilet. Okay, so what you're gonna be doing when you're connected on here and you wanna do a, a flush, when your tank is at least two thirds full, never let it be more than two thirds full, but when it is, you can go ahead and open this valve up. So you open it up fully. On the other end, you have this guy over here. And this one connects right over here. And this is gonna go straight into wherever the dump station is. It goes right inside. It's clear for a reason. You're gonna be looking at it. It's gonna be making sure all the black comes out. It's gonna be flushing through, flushing through, flushing through. Wait until you no longer see any water coming out of here. As soon as that happens, you can go ahead and close that up. And then you have the gray one. So the gray tank you're gonna go ahead and do after you do the black, close it up. Then you open up the gray one. The gray one is gonna be what we use for the sink, what we use for the shower. It's gonna, it's gonna be nice and soapy. It's gonna clean out the line right over here. And after you're done with that, close it back up. And then you have the sanitation flush right over here. It's gonna be the last thing you do. Again, this is for a sanitation flush. White is for sanitation. Green is for water, for drinking. Connect it up, turn on the water and that's gonna be flushing it through. Go ahead and open the black one right back up and it's gonna flush your black tank through. Have a nice, clean, same thing. Make sure it goes all the way through. Uh, we do have this guy right over here. If you need to use it, it allows the hose here to always have an angle. You're always gonna to wanna to have this at the highest point and this one at the lowest point. This one right over here is gonna allow you to do that. All you do is open it up and you stretch it out as much or little as you need. That way you keep it right over here, keep it right over here. And you're always gonna have this point here at the lowest point, this point here at the highest point. It works really, really good. If you do, if you're further away from the actual dump flush, we do have a second extension hose. That's gonna be a total of 20 feet. So if you are a little further away, you do have the possibility to I do it from further away. This is all gonna be the one with the red lid. Please close everything nicely and tight back inside. Okay, and then we have our green one, remember for the drinking water? That's gonna be in the other one here. 
We do have some extra stuff as well. Uh, more water filters. Here's the, all the, the gloves. Okay, now the next thing you wanna do is you're gonna wanna get power to your RV. It's nice and simple. This one right here goes into the 30 amp. Make sure it's gonna say 30 amp right over here. You put it right inside, it's got three prongs right over here. Put it right inside. Once it hooks up and then you just tighten this guy up. On the other end, you have this guy right here. 30 amp has one, two, three. 50 amp will have five of them. You're only gonna be able to use a 30 amp. Hook it up, put it right on there. You'll have electricity to run absolutely everything in the RV, including the air conditioner. You're gonna be able to run the television. You'll be able to run every one of the outlets, the microwave and everything else. This is for 30 amp. Uh, we do provide this guy right over here. Now this one right here allows you to be able to hook it up to a regular hookup, uh, a regular outlet at home. Now with this here, you connect it right on here and you put it on. Now do remember your electricity at home will not be able to power up everything on here. So if you're at home and you need temporary power, you want to be able to load everything up, you can connect it right on here. Do not turn on the air conditioner. It will turn everything off immediately. Then you can have some issues with electricity. Do not use a microwave. This will not power up the microwave. This is mainly used for, for power inside for the outlets and everything else like that. You can use it. Otherwise, you're good over here. Uh, we provide an extension cord. If you need an extension cord, right over here. Don't worry about this guy here. This is for the water heater. Uh, there's no reason for you to go in there. If your campsite provides cable, it's right over here. All you do is connect the, the coaxial right over here to the, to the coaxial in, input from the campsite. Generator right here. Again, there's no need for you to use generator. The generator, unlike the old generators, we do have the start and stop inside the RV. I'll show you how to use that later. This one right over here provides for our fresh water tank. So what you use, you're gonna be getting same thing. You'll be using this green hose. Remember this is for drinking water. And this guy goes right inside this one, put it right inside all the way in. And then all you do is you connect it around here. And this is uh, to allow you to have water while you're on the road, water to, uh, to have in the RV if the campsite does not provide direct water from the city water connection on that side over there. Um, same thing over here for the side view mirrors. They are manual. Make sure you just move them manually and they'll be set to go. All right, guys, I'm going to be showing you in the driver's side, every, all the buttons, all the functions for the driver's side. Uh, to begin with, if for whatever reason in an emergency, the car battery does not start, meaning the ignition does not want to turn on, you do have what we call the house batteries that are in the back. We have an emergency start right here. What you do is you press this button, you hold it for a few seconds. As you're holding the button, you're going to go ahead and put the ignition key on and turn it. That will turn on the car in case the car battery dies. Second thing we have, like any other car, we have our lights. Our headlights, we have automatic turn on to uh, high beams right over here. Uh, thirdly, we have the dome light. The dome light is going to be in the center between the driver and passenger side. If you turn it all the way to the left, it turns it on. And if you slightly turn it to the right, it's going to start to dim it a little bit. We have our cruise control right up here. It works like any other vehicle cruise control. You set it. You increase, decrease the speed. Uh, remember, you are driving an RV, so please maintain your speed. Uh, do not drive anything above 65, 70 miles an hour. You are gonna be feeling it. This is a very square vehicle. So, and if there is a lot of high wind, you do need to be very careful driving the vehicle. Uh, drive under the speed limit. Otherwise, you may have some issues. Don't forget, this is like a flag. This will be moving the vehicle around a lot. Uh, right over here, uh, we also have, if you're going to be towing a vehicle, we have a plus and minus on here. I, remember, you cannot tow a vehicle unless you get our permission ahead of time. Uh, but there is a plus or minus right on here uh, for the towing vehicle. There's also uh, the button down here uh, for the towage. All right, guys, we're going to be showing you the center console and how to operate it. So this here is going to be the radio. Now, the radio doesn't work like, like a normal vehicle. Uh, you do have to have the house batteries turned on, and that's going to be in a different step on how to turn on the house batteries. But just really quickly, guys, uh, if you do have Bluetooth uh, or Bluetooth phone, you can set it right on here, Bluetooth music, and you can go ahead and sync it up to your phone. 
Uh, right here it says zone one and zone two. Okay, very important. If zone one or zone two are depressed, they're gonna have no sound at all. If you press zone one, zone one controls the speakers in the front cabin, only the front cabin. So if you're driving and everyone else is sleeping, go ahead and press zone one and you will only hear sound coming from the front speakers in the cabin. If you go to zone two, zone two controls the speakers in the back. So it's up to you if you want to put zone one, zone two together, zone one only or zone two only. And real quickly guys, in order to, to get the rear camera, very important, uh, the rear camera will go ahead and deploy. If you put it in reverse, the rear camera automatically turns on. However, if you're driving and you do want to have the rear camera uh, on at all times, all you have to do is press the home button, uh, get on here and you press rear camera. Rear camera will go ahead and turn on in the back. Okay. It's a very nice, clear quality for, for the vehicle. I do really recommend that you keep the rear camera on at all times as our cyber mirror does not show you anything in the back. Okay. Um, if you do have an HDMI connection from your phone to an HDMI, you can go ahead and sync it up so, to have it right on here. If you do want to have, for example, GPS from your phone, it will connect directly from the HDMI from your phone to the HDMI. Uh, we have the USB chargers. We also have a regular power outlet. We have a, a regular house 120 volt, as well as another outlet right over here. All right, guys, I'm gonna be showing you guys our overhead bed here. We have the ladder right over here. Please leave the ladder here if you're not gonna be using it. If you are using it, just go ahead and grab it over here. There's two hooks right on there. You, they hook up right here, nice and straight. You just climb it and you get right over there. Uh, so let me move this to the side here. Um, this one right here, if you're driving and you wanna have a little more room, headroom to be able to go from the cabin to the back, all you have to do is you lift this guy over here, you turn it, and you bring it back over here. It gives you easy access to the front cabin. Okay. Um, if you are going to be using the television, you have two ways of using it. You can just leave it in position right there. However, most of the time you're going to be wanting to have access from the dining room and from the bedroom. And all you have to do, there's two knobs right over here. There's a knob on the bottom and a knob on the top. Turn the bottom one counterclockwise, top one clockwise, turn them over, and then the, bed, the TV will go ahead and slide over. Once you get that in position, go ahead and lock that back up right over here. Uh, and there's a remote control that's gonna be uh, Velcroed on the back over there. Uh, you do have access to air antenna. So if you wanna have local uh, television shows, you can watch it on there. We do have an Xbox right up here, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, as well as some campsites do have cable television. There is a hookup for cable uh, right outside. So if you guys wanna uh, watch cable television, if your campsite provides it, you can hook it up and you'll be set to go. If you wanna bring your own Fire TV or anything else, you're welcome to connect it. There's an HDMI cable that's already pre-wired, so you, all you have to do is connect your, your device and you're good to go. When you are driving, please make sure that these do stay locked up. We do not want the TV to be moving around when you're driving. Uh, one thing that I do caution you is we do not have a net or anything else on here. Uh, you should never have anyone up here when you're driving for safety reasons, obviously. Um, but even when you're at nighttime, you're, you're camping your campsite um, and you have small children up here, please be careful with the kids so they don't fall over. There is no net. There's nothing holding them back, okay? Uh, oh, and we do have this guy right up here. So with the different vents, there's a vent in the front, there's three other vents in the rear. Uh, they're very helpful to add some circulation to it. Um, all you have to do is you turn it over, you lift it up, and it creates a nice little vent on here. Uh, one very important thing, never ever drive with the vents open. Always make sure all the vents are completely closed, otherwise you do run the risk of having the vents fly off or you're driving on the freeway, um, and we don't want that to happen. We do have lights right up here on both sides. We have a privacy curtain. Goes both sides right over here. If you need some privacy at nighttime. We do have a smoke detector right up here. 
Okay, there is also a drape that covers the entire front cabin. If you wanna have some privacy, make sure no one else can see from the outside. Those Velcros stuck right over here and it goes all the back here, there, 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 and there. Just put that skirt right on there, the Velcro right on, and you have a lot of privacy to allow you to, to sleep at night um, comfortably. All right guys, right here we have the control panel. This is the main thing that you're gonna be looking at as soon as you come into the RV. Uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is, if you're gonna be um, taking a shower, you know, for example, if you're in an RV site um, or campground that provides for automatic water, electricity, everything else, um, this is where you're gonna be using. So you turn on your water pump right away, um, then you're gonna start hearing a noise. As soon as this water pump is turned on, you can also turn on your, your heater. Um, if there is no electric hookup, and then what you do is you can use the LP gas. That's a propane tank. You turn this guy right on over here. Um, if there is no electricity hookup. If there is electricity hookup, you go ahead and turn that off and you turn on the 110 volt and that's gonna turn on the water heater. The water heater takes about 10 minutes for the water to heat up. So just be conscious of it. Make sure you turn it on right away and you can have hot water throughout your entire time. Uh, right over here to turn on the generator. Uh, this is in case the campground does not have electricity hookup. We do have a generator right on here. And you can see firstly the hours. Right now it's at 29.6 hours. Uh, you are allowed six free hours uh, every day for your camping. And all you have to do is you press the down button. You have to prime it for 10 seconds. So you press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And go ahead and press start. The generator will go ahead and start. Keep holding it until it turns on. Okay, now it's on. Uh, make sure that uh, you do turn off the generator as soon as you're done using it. The generator's main purpose is to provide electricity throughout the coach. For example, if you do not have electrical hookup, uh, the house batteries will not allow the microwave to work or the central AC to work. So the generator is gonna be needed for those things. Uh, do be conscious though that most campsites do have quiet hours for the generator. So make sure you're using it only during the hours that you're allowed to use it uh, for camping. I'm not gonna turn it off because it gets pretty loud. Press down, stop. Now it turns it off right there. Okay, the next things I want you to look at, there's several buttons on here, LPG, battery, fresh, black and gray. Uh, right up here is gonna tell us how much is in each of those. The first one, LPG, that's gonna be our propane tank. So you press the button right here, it currently has two thirds full, okay? Um, two thirds will last you for quite a long time. The only things that propane is used for, it's gonna be for the stove, um, as well as the refrigerator, if there's no electric power, and the water heater, if there is no electrical power. So that's all it's used for. Um, the second button on here, the battery, you press the battery on here, and those are what we call the house batteries. So right now it's full. Um, the house batteries should last you uh, the full day use uh, to use them. And the house battery mainly controls the lights around the, the RV as well as the plugs going in. Uh, it does come with a solar panel. So the solar panel is recharging the batteries throughout the day. It's only a trickle charge. So don't expect the solar panel to charge it fully from empty to full. Uh, the third one right on here is fresh. This, when you press fresh on here, it currently has one third of fresh, that's fresh water. Fresh water is the, the drinkable water, the water you're gonna be using for your sink, the water you're gonna be using for, for the showers, okay? It currently has one third, and I'll be showing you in a minute how to fill that up. The next button says black. Okay, the, the black tank on here is currently on empty. Remember, empty, one third, two thirds, or full. Uh, when you press the black tank, the black tank is specifically and solely for the toilet so you know uh, how full it is. Never ever allow the black or gray tanks to be full past two thirds, hopefully no more than one third. Um, every campsite should have a dump station, so please take a look. Sometime after half a day or so, take a look what's going on with the tank. Is it empty? Good. One third, you're fine. You have two thirds, uh, you're gonna wanna start dumping. The gray tank, gray tank currently is empty as well. The gray tank is used for um, sinks and showers. So that's all of the water that, that is used for the sink and the shower. Uh, again, make sure uh, if it's anything past two thirds, you're gonna have to uh, dump it out. Otherwise you're gonna have some issues. So please make sure you do that. 
Um, the last thing also is make sure that when you are returning the RV, uh, make sure that both your black and your grain tax are completely empty. Okay, uh, that's it for this part. Okay guys, right over here, we have what we call the house batteries. This right here is currently on off. Anytime you're gonna be using the electrical power, make sure you just do is turn it right on. Let's go ahead and turns on the house batteries so you can use the house batteries. If you are plugged into an RV site and you have electrical hookup, um, this doesn't matter because you're getting electricity from the RV campsite, not from the RV house batteries. Uh, right over here, you have the awning. If you wanna have the awning come out, what you have to do is on awning, press up, hold it all the way up. It's gonna come out all the way, wait until it comes out completely. Okay, and to retract it, all you do is press it right back in. Okay, this here is gonna be your awning light to turn it on and off, step light to turn it on and off. Uh, this is one of our outlets. There are outlets throughout the RV. And do remember that the outlets will only work if you have the electric hookup from the campsite or if you have the generator running. Uh, these two lights here, this main light over here turns on all the lights throughout the cabin. Uh, this one turns on other lights as well. You wanna just press those on and off. Uh, if you, whenever you're gonna be leaving the RV, uh, you need to make sure you just turn off the house batteries immediately to avoid having the batteries run out completely. And then down here, we have the solar panel. The solar panel down here you currently see has 12.9 volts coming in. Um, it's fully powered right now. Again, that runs from uh, the solar panel that's above the roof. And also remember, it charges, it trickle charges. It does not give a full power throughout. Uh, just to the right of the solar panel, uh, we do have a very important fire extinguisher right over here. It's currently on full max and uh, in case of emergency, just pull it out and help yourself to use it. Uh, please be careful with any time you have any fires. Hey guys, welcome to the interior of the RV. I'll give you a quick little run down here. We do have a queen bed over here. It's considered an RV queen, so it's not exactly the same size. Um, it is gonna come fully with the sheets uh, as well as a comforter. Uh, we're gonna have a total of six pillows. There's four over here. There's gonna be two in other places as well. There's plenty of storage right up here. One, two, three cabinets up here. Um, throughout the RV, you're gonna be seeing different USB ports to connect any television, I'm sorry, any phones or anything else you may have. Uh, we have our remote control for the TV with Velcro. Please leave it on here. We're not gonna be using it. There's a nice large closet right over here for all your items. You could hang up everything on here. More storage right over here. If it's a cold night and you are gonna need the heater, there is the heaters right over here. Uh, at least the control for the heater is right over here. The heater itself is down here. This, the heater will get hot, so be careful with that. So in case you do have a cold night, heater's right over here. Heater will run off the propane. Um, this year for our refrigerator, um, be extra careful when you are driving. When you close it up, make sure you listen to a click. Okay, and when you're gonna be opening it, press it in, out, come out. The click is super important. If, you, if it does not click, that means it's not fully closed. And guess what? It's gonna be opening up on you and you're gonna have all your food coming out. We don't want that. Make sure it clicks on. More storage down here. This section right over here, I hope you never have to use it, but if you do, we do have everything on here. Uh, we have the fuses right over here. You will see extra fuses uh, in the storage in the back. Um, if for whatever reason uh, these do trip, go ahead and, and close them up, bring them back up. All you do is turn this way, turn it back on, and you'll be good to go. Okay guys, the, the ever important part here for all our gourmet chefs, we do have a fully functioning kitchen. Uh, the sink here has a cover. All you have to do is remove the cover if you only use the sink. I, this works just like a regular sink at home. Turn on the water, turn it off. Uh, you can press this depress here. Hot water goes this way, cold water goes this way here. And we do provide dishwashing soap as well as hand sanitizer. Uh, please, please, every time you do come in the RV, use hand, hand sanitizer. Let's all be safe. Uh, we do, we're going to be providing uh, a full paper towel. Uh, there's a dispenser right over here. We do have some hooks throughout if you haven't put anything on there. There's a small little table on here. If you need some extra cabin space or extra space for cooking, you bring it right up. 
to close it up, all you do is you press it here. Pull it right here, press it in. And comes down. Right over here, we do have our stove. Again, the stove works off the propane. All you have to do is move this glass cover right over here. And to turn each of the burners on, first you put it on the second air for the burn. Then this one right here, you turn it over. That turns it on. Here's this one over here, same thing, you do it. And this one ignites the second one. This one right here, put it over here, ignites the third one. Make sure you do turn them off as soon as you're done using them. Remember, you do have a propane tank, but it is limited. Okay guys, let me show you real quick our microwave. Works like any other microwave at home. The only difference being that this will only work if the generator is on, which is currently on, you hear that buzzing noise, or if you're hooked up to the 30 amp at your campsite. So it works like just like anything else, just right over here. Uh, you can use it at any time. Uh, right over here, we do have our dish rack over here. If you need to use it to dry up your dishes, all you do is lift it up, depress it, and you can use it, okay? Okay, put that away right over here. Okay, the refrigerator. This is the freezer and here's the refrigerator right over here. Now, very important, there's a two buttons right up here. It says on and off. When you have it on, if you're gonna be using it, um, I will be turning it on ahead of time when you come rent the RV to make sure that everything is nice and cold for you guys to throw everything right in there. Um, if you're done, but you're camping and you're on your way home and you have no food in here anymore, you can just go ahead and turn it off. There's a, a second button to the right where it says auto, check, and gas. So you wanna just leave it on, on auto. What that does is it's gonna be turning on the, the refrigerator by one of two ways. Either if you're hooked up to electricity or if you're not hooked up to electricity, propane will be keeping this refrigerator nice and cold for you. So just go ahead and keep that on the auto. Don't mess with that. If you turn it off right now because we're not gonna be using it. Uh, one important thing guys, because we are an RV, the RV moves around a lot. So you do have to be extra careful with all these drawers here that when you open them up, you fully shut them all the way closed. You're gonna hear a click on every single one. They all have locks underneath the cabin to make sure when you open them up, you close them right up. The kitchen is gonna come fully stocked with everything you're gonna need for the kitchen. You can have a cutting board, you can have knives, you can have forks, plates, you can have spoons, you can have pots, pans. Uh, so you can have everything, bowls, cups, plates. So you're gonna be fully stocked with everything. The only thing we're not gonna have is food. Make sure you bring some food. Um, the one thing we do ask is do not cook any fish, do not cook anything that's gonna make the RV smoky. If you are gonna be doing anything like that, uh, I ask you to be, to be cooking outside most RV sites to provide some type of a grill or in a fire pit. So please not cook anything that's gonna be smoking in place. We don't want the RV smelling like food when you return it. Thank you so much. All right, guys, just because you're camping doesn't mean you can't shower. We have a fully functioning bathroom here with a full shower. Uh, here's our, our shower head right here, hot water, cold water. Remember, leave the heater, the water heater turn on for at least 10 minutes to work. I'm six feet tall and I can fit perfectly fine. There's a skylight right up here to allow everyone who's tall to be standing right over here. This one, you can close it right up. Here we have another vent, open up the vent. This one does also have a little fan on here. You press that button over here and then the switch over here, this will turn it on. Okay, um, does have a light as well. The light is, is right over here to the right. Make sure you remember to close everything up when you are gonna be driving. We do have some hand soap right over here. Yeah, here's for the water, hot and cold, same thing. We're always gonna have extra toilet paper, the ever important toilet paper down here. You should always have at least a few rolls in the RV. Please only use RV toilet paper, the toilet paper that we provide. Do not purchase any of your own toilet paper. The RVs are not meant to be used with regular toilet paper. Uh, for the actual toilet itself, we do have a ceramic toilet, which is great. So the way you're gonna be using it, you have this lever down here, it's a foot lever. What you do is you press it down and it allows all the water to go out. When you're gonna be using it right before you use it, make sure you add a little bit of water. And then when you're done, just press it down and the toilet will flush. There's another outlet right up here. Remember the outlets will only work if the generator 
or you're hooked up to 30 amp power working on. Uh, here's some extra storage. You can put whatever you want, person belongings right over here. All right, guys, welcome to our dining room. This has room for four or five or six of tiny little ones right over here. It does have seat belt right down here and in the front as well. So this is gonna be a nice dining room. Uh, the shades here are gonna have shades throughout every large window. All you have to do is use your hand, raise and lower. So when you do raise it and you're gonna be up in the window, all you have to do is slide it over. And you have nice pressure coming in. It provides perfect ventilation if you open up both sides throughout. Uh, you can also open up this screen and close it. Uh, when you are driving, make sure the windows are completely closed. Otherwise, you're going to be getting a lot of noise coming in. So please just go ahead and close the window when you're done. Okay, and not only is this our dining room, this is also our second bedroom. People always ask, what do you mean you have three beds? Yeah, we do have three beds. We have our queen bed in the back. We have our bed over the bunk as well as our bed right over here. Very simple. There's a little lever down here, a little black lever. What you do right now is nice and sturdy right there. All you do is bring the lever down, use your hand right in the center, bring it all the way down. It locks into place. You're gonna get the cushion from one side, put it right over. Cushion from the other side. Bring it right over. Now you have another bed, okay? Nice and simple. And same thing, if you want to put it back up, all you do is put the cushions back. Same thing the other side. Okay, to lift it up, just grab it. Make sure it goes all the way to the top and put that lever back on. Now it's locked and you're set to go. Uh, always remember, do not ever drive with the windows open, you have too much noise, you have some issues. Um, I, I am gonna remind you that I do not want the RV ever driven anything above 70 miles an hour. The RVs just are not safe. They're not meant to be driven in high speeds. If you are driving and it's windy, please slow your speed down. Okay, no more than 45, 50, 55 miles an hour. Don't forget, you have a 24 and a half foot RV, uh, very tall, almost 12 foot tall, big square box. It's not meant to be driven in high winds. It's not meant to be uh, driven in high speeds. Uh, one thing I do caution you is, uh, if you are tired for whatever reason, pull over, you have a bed, stop, be safe at all times. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to message me. You can call me, you can text me. My phone number is 714-403-2369. Thank you.